The following is an interview with Professor LaMonda Horton Stallings of Indiana University, conducted by Lindsay Stewart at the Penn State University as part of the 2012 National Endowment for the Humanities Summer Institute on Contemporary African American Literature. Thank you for being with us today, Dr. Horton Stallings. Thank you for having me. So, how would you describe your approach to teaching African American literature as a tradition? Well, I think my approach is probably non-traditional. Uh, I usually inter interrogate African American literature in, in terms of thinking about gender and sexuality within African American literature. And so my approach is not literary history, um, but it does take into account the kind of history of both the, the kind of fiction, the non-fiction, the critical work. Um, but usually I ask questions about how have black people used this literature to construct their ideologies about gender and sexuality. Mm -hmm. And so that's my basic approach to it. I realize it's non-traditional, um, less, less historical, um, but it's a, it's a kind of important way to approach it, I think, considering that literature has been used to construct law, laws about gender, uh, about race, about sexuality, about medicine, um, about um, policies, and so forth. And so I think it's an effective approach that's different than thinking about it in terms of just race. Mm -hmm. Do you think your approach has changed over the years? Did you start out with, with thinking of it in this way? It has changed over the years. I think I initially started with just um, with this basic premise of, of African American literature being about racial identity. Mm -hmm. And what the literature showed me was that it's not just about racial identity. And so that basically led to a kind of focus and focused area of thinking about gender and sexuality. So it has changed over the years. Um, primarily because of uh, I think about the ways in which um, reading not just kind of black women writers, but understanding how I was also then picking up on what gender meant to black male writers and so forth. So going back and forth and looking at why these questions were consistently popping up um, became important to me as well. Um, what was your first response to Ken Warren's proclamation that African American literature has ended since segregation? Well, I think my knee-jerk response was, what does he mean it's ended? Like, it's, mm -hmm. there's still a bunch of kind of um, writers who are fitting into what we've considered to be African-American literary tradition. I didn't necessarily agree with it. I still don't think African-American literature has ended, that we can't base the kind of construct of the tradition on Jim Crow. Like, mm -hmm. as I just, that's my whole kind of approach, is that there's something else going on other than a concern with the kind of visible signs of Jim Crow as it pertains to um, racial identity, that these other considerations of class, of gender, of sexuality matter in that construct. And if you understand that, then you know that those are conversations still going on in what we consider to be African American literature. And so I also consider it a kind of very anti-erotic text and approach to African American literature that it um, foresees it as, um, as this kind of assignment of what a text should do. Mm -hmm. um, and clearly texts always do um, several different things, whether it's promote social justice or give us pleasure, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean that it ends when whatever social justice you think have, has been reached, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it, it means the tradition has ended. So what new trend or issue in African-American literature has caught your interest? Well, I think uh, tr new trends that have to do with um, what other aesthetics are available to African-American writers other than the oral, which I think gains mm -hmm. signifying monkey and Baker's um, blues ideology, um, as well as um, From Trickster to Batman by John W. Roberts. Like a lot of the early works um, dealt with the kind of oral tradition. And I think there are a lot of new works, Nicole Fleetwood's um, work, um, Monica Miller's work, that all approach this idea of what the visual means for African Americans. We know, just like Ralph Ellison was a musician um, that informs his work, Bruce Nugent was an artist. Um, there are a number of kind of visual artists um, 
who are, who are also writers mm -hmm. in the tradition. I think also thinking about what other kind of performance informs outside mm -hmm. of orality um, African American literature becomes important. Another kind of trend for me is to think about um, issues of sexuality outside of um, gay and lesbian, to think about what are the representations of trans, trans men, trans women in African American literature. If we think about something like Ruby D. and Ozzie Davis's um, autobiography in the tradition of black autobiography, um, not just in terms of racial identity, but the kind of confession that's in that narrative about um, them having an open marriage, how does that change what we know about black autobiographies and dealing with gender and sexuality in a black tradition. So looking at the ways in which these the, the tradition has evolved both in form, because I think technology figures into this as well. What are e-tags? Um, Zane, who's an erotic writer, starts off um, on the internet and then goes to print. So the ways in which the form itself changes and how that dictates what how African Americans can get publisher or get um, wider kind of audiences and so forth becomes important. So I think there's technology, there's issues around sexuality, and then there's ways of rethinking blackness that for me are the new trends that still need to be like supported um, in ways that they're not. But I, I do think those are some of the new trends that I find interesting and, and would like to explore more. And so you mentioned Zane, and um, thinking about contemporary African American literature, um, like graphic novels or urban fiction or hip hop fiction, mm -hmm. how important is it to you to bring these sort of materials into a classroom? I think it's very important to teach um, contemporary African American literature, especially think what we would call street literature, street fiction, becomes important to taking up these issues of class that have been kind of under analyze in African-American literary criticism and tradition. I think it has a history that predates, um, it's kind of 20th, 21st, late 20th, 21st century um, compartment, but that it's, it's an important part of the tradition. Like it gets at the, the kind of divisions between lower class and middle class mm -hmm. black people. It gives you the different aesthetics that are available to people. It also, defies the notion that poor people don't read and yeah. I think that's a kind of important thing to, to kind of get over and, and understanding that wherever people started in terms of reading they always move forward and on to other things so like even if we start in a kind of tradition of hip-hop fiction or street literature it doesn't mean that black people stay there like and so I think that's important you think about people like Jay Z having a um, now having an autobiography again. This understanding that a hip hop audience is reading already, like mm -hmm. they read for Jay Z, yeah. but he also reads as well. So mm -hmm. like this kind of understanding uh, from this generation of what reading means and what these people have read informs the fact that he wanted to do an autobiography, not just to make money, but understanding that there's a tradition. Mm -hmm of reading amongst these people who aren't supposed to be literate in this in this sense that deals with a, a particular type of genre of um, literature. Right, so transitioning to thinking about the Institute, how did you prepare for your sessions? Well, I think for me, I did a bunch of kind of uh, prep work around my section on eroticism, transient, and black literature. I also just looked at what other people were doing. So we all, I think, engaged what was African American literature by Kenneth Warner. So I think mm. taking the approach that my particular way into that text is going to be different from everybody else's. So I tried to cover elements of that when I talk about it as an anti-erotic text, talk mm. about that differently than other people who might be engaging it in terms of thinking about the historical tradition of segregation and so forth. But I also did a lot of kind of prep work around what is the tradition of, of African American yeah. literature. Um, in this context of the academy. And so I think I engaged both the critical work on black fiction, but also looked at who has contributed to this knowledge about what is African-American literature. And that's how I prepared and thought about the, the, the institute as how to read and how to talk about and analyze African-American texts, but also how to teach them. And so there's a lot of ways in which I 
prepared to, to talk pedagogically about how to approach these texts in the classrooms that we did end up doing in the institute seminar. So that was right. great. So it wasn't wasted preparation, <laughs> but I did. Those are the ways that I prepared to think about it in terms of analysis of text and teaching of text. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Thank you.